What's up everyone, today I want to talk to you about the Microsoft Graph API. We'll talk about what it can be used for and how to get started with it. And actually to get started, I want to try something new and let's jump over to the whiteboard and draw out exactly how this service works and what you can do with it. The Microsoft Graph API is a service provided by Microsoft that allows you to access different things inside of Office 365, the Windows operating system, other things like enterprise and mobility, uh, Azure AD or Intra ID, using REST APIs and client libraries. An API is a web service that you can use to interact with another service. In this case, like we just talked about, Microsoft 365 and others. The Graph API has a common web URL, and that is graph.microsoft.com. So what you can do is make request to this URL to retrieve specific information or maybe to make changes inside of your environment. Along with this URL, there is also versioning information. In this case, there is version 1.0, and there's also currently a beta version. So you can make these requests to either version. I'd recommend always using the production or version 1.0 or whatever version it happens to be when you watch this video. But you can also experiment with newer features that aren't quite production ready if you wanted to using the beta version. Let's go through a quick example where we are going to retrieve information about my current user account or my profile that is stored out in Intra ID. Here's our backend service of Intra ID. I have some type of application that I've built out here. It could be anything from something like C Sharp or Python, Node.js, or even PowerShell. That's not important right now. We'll get into that a little bit later in some other videos. But what I can do is within my application, I can make a request out to the URL of graph.microsoft.com version v.10. And then after that, I specify what services I want to access or what type of information I want to retrieve. So in my app, let's say I just want information about my profile. The full URL of me making this request is going to be HTTPS graph dot Microsoft dot com. Then we have the version and then slash me. So my application, using whatever libraries it has built in to make web requests, will make that request out to this URL and say, hey, give me the information in my profile. Maybe it's my name, my current department, when my account was created. Another part of this request is using an HTTP method. There are a couple of different methods that we can use. Since I'm only retrieving information, we're going to use the get method. So my application is going to use the HTTP get method. It's going to call this URL with all of the information that I want to retrieve. It will make that request out to the Graph API. Graph API will then interact with the backend service of whatever service I'm wanting to interact with. That service will then send its response back through the Graph API to my application. And that response will have things, in this case, about my profile, maybe something like name or my company name, anything that's associated my user account in my directory. And what is sent back from the Graph API is called the response. Now, like I mentioned, we have a couple of different HTTP actions that we can do. We just talked about git. So git is just used to retrieve information. It's not going to make any changes. We're just getting responses back. Another option is post, which is where we are going to create something, a new object or resource, or maybe even potentially make a change to an existing one. We have the put method, which is going to do replacements. If we were going to completely replace a resource, we would use the put method. 
Another one we have is patch. This is also where we do a modification on an existing resource. And then of course we have delete, which is where it's going to delete or remove the resource. So our application could make a request to a different URL where we might say delete a user account or even patch where we want to modify my current user account. Now we've got a basic understanding of what an API is and how we can use it to interact with the Graph API. Let's jump out to a web app provided by Microsoft called the Graph Explorer and see how we can use this in real life. Here we are out in the Graph Explorer. I'll put the URL down in the video description and I should also be popping it up here on the screen. But this is a way you can practice with the Graph API and see what commands are possible. And it also gives you a few examples to try to explore and learn and see all the things that you can do. I'm currently signed into my Office 365 tenant. If you don't have one, that's okay. You don't have to sign in. It will just give you example data that you can work with. You might not be able to make any changes to it, but you can at least use the get or retrieve method to interact with it to you know, get a good idea of how it works. But I'm signed into my tenant, so we'll actually be able to work with real data. Well, let's go ahead and get started looking at this first example query. First, we have our HTTP method. We are using just git because we're going to retrieve information. But in the drop down menu here, you can see we have our other methods, post, put, patch, and delete. We talked about our graph API version. We have version 1.0 and beta. And then we have the core URL of graph.microsoft.com. That will never change. That's always going to be the graph API URL. And then it's auto-populated the version for me. And then what type of query do we want to make? Right now it's slash me, so it's going to pull back information about my profile. So let's go ahead and run the query. And we get our response right down here. So inside of this response, let's see what type of information is included. We have business phone number, we have my display name, given name, job title, mail, mobile phone, office location, preferred language, my surname, user principal name, and ID. If you're familiar with Azure AD or Intra ID, there is a lot more information that is associated with my profile, but this is just the default response if you make this query. However, we can do more with this and actually get additional information or only retrieve specific pieces of information that we want to know about. And we can do that by modifying our URL here. So if we do a question mark, a couple of options come up. We can do select here. It's going to do select equal sign. And we can scroll through here and see all of the properties associated with my profile that we can pull back. So let's actually do display name is my account enabled. We'll look at user principal name and let's see, created date time. Now this URL is retrieving my profile information and we're only going to pull back these specific properties. Let's go ahead and run the query. As you can see, our results are much shorter and it just gives the information that I requested. So you're not limited to just what you see in the default response. You can do things like select, filter, query to retrieve back specific information. Modifying the URL is just one method to change the response that you get back. Sometimes you will need to put additional information inside this request body here. We're not going to worry about that just now. I'll have later examples in other videos of request bodies that you can use to specify information if you go to create resources or make other changes. There's also request headers. This can include information like a bearer token, which is an authorization token that gives you permissions to interact with the Graph API, or you might need to specify what type of data that you're sending to the Graph API. It's usually JSON. The modify permissions here is specific to Graph Explorer. It just shows what type of data that you're allowed to retrieve or read or change. And speaking of the request headers and what I mentioned in a bearer access token, within Graph Explorer, this is my current access token. 
So in order to interact with the Graph API, you have to be authorized. You have to be given permissions to do it. And that's through this access token. Now, Graph Explorer is automatically going out and getting this access token for me. In other videos, I do plan on going over how to create this access token. You actually have to make a separate request to get the access token, and then you can use that access token to interact with Graph API. That'll be something for a later video. So now we've seen how we can get information. Let's take a look at how we can modify information. And actually, let's take a look at our command again here, and I want to pull back my department. So let's go ahead and run the query again. If we look at our response, we can see my department is currently null. I do not have a department associated with my user account. Let's go over here to the sample queries. If we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we can see there are some more example queries here for interacting with your user account. And let's look at something with a different method. So we have the patch method. Remember, patch we can use to modify current resources. We'll select this example query. It's going to load up in here. And if we expand this out, you can actually see the request body. Again, the request body is where you can include additional information about how you want to interact with the resource. In this case, we're saying we want to update the department field for my user account. So let's go ahead and select this. And I'm going to set my department to information technology. As you can see here, our HTTP method has changed to patch. So let's go ahead and run this query against my profile. Now you can see the response preview down here didn't show anything like we saw in our other queries here because we're not retrieving information, we're just making a change. And as long as our response did not include any errors or anything, it's just empty, that means it was successful. So let's actually go back. We'll run a git. We'll change this here. We'll go back and use select. And let's look for department. And we'll run our query again. And actually, we don't need to put anything in the request body here. So let me go ahead and clean that up and remove it. And now we can run the query. And now we can see my department is listed as information technology. You can see how you can use the Graph API to not only retrieve information, but also make changes to current resources, including things like your user account. But there's so many other things that Graph API does. It interacts with Microsoft Teams. You can create teams and channels. You can actually even start calls and meetings using it. You can then also interact with other things like Dynamics 365, pretty much anything that is out in Office 365 or Azure AD. All right, so that does it for this video. Just a quick introduction on the Graph API and how you can use Graph Explorer to get more familiar with it. In upcoming videos, I'm going to show you how you can get your access token and then make requests out to the Graph API. And we're going to do that, of course, inside of PowerShell. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.